You want to see my finished World of Warcraft giraffe? So do I! That'll be next week. But if you want to see how I made his face and his horns and got all this detail onto him, stay tuned! Hey, I'm Pam Duffy and I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. And it's a Thursday, so it's another needle felting project. And we're in the middle of making our World of Warcraft themed giraffe. So if you haven't already, I'll put up the playlists where you can see how I made the armature for this big guy, padded out his musculature and started putting the skin on him. And today we're going to look at how I gave him his little face with these huge horns as well. So because this is a fantasy figure and you don't get the best detail in the game, I'm taking some inspiration from other people's fan art as well. And his face is a little more ibexy e than what I did for a regular giraffe. Um, just making some slight alterations there and trying to go off some of the fan art. But I think he's looking a little more battle ready. So let's get in and have a look at how I made his face, his chin, his mouth, everything else. And I'll come back and speak to you about it later.
So the trouble I find with heads and the ears is trying to make them so that they're not too large. This was the problem I had in the first case with my original giraffe. Um, his head's quite large in proportion, so I ended up making him a sitting down baby giraffe. But I really wanted this guy to be a bit more in proportion. In proportion to a mythical creature, but in proportion. So to make him look as large as he is, he needs to have a small head. So this gives me some some slight more difficult steps to make and so first of all what I did was made his bottom lip and tried to shape this jaw shape so I put some muscle around the bottom of his jaw so it curves out and then a little dip and then out again for his the bottom of his jaw and making the front of his mouth was rather similar to how I made the dragon that's felting to a point down at the lips um, I have no idea. I couldn't properly see if this is what it's like in the drawings, but I just thought it gave him a, I thought it would give him a slightly more fierce look. He's not looking overly fierce, but he did go through a really pretty stage at some point. You'll see that. And then the nose is making two arcs, two snakes, and felting them on in a kind of M shape at the top of his, well, at the end of his lips where a nose would be. Then at that stage we can start building up the base colour on his head. I'll be doing a lot more shading later and creating the ears for him. This I find is easiest to felt between my fingers and you don't want to make ears too big. As you can see in the pictures when I put the ears on him in the first place they were a bit big and it made him look a bit comical and cute but just spend a bit of time even while it's still on felting all around and that can shrink it down in size until they're a bit more proportionate to what you want and then just using two pipe cleaners to make his horns and when they're attached to the body I just added a little bit of the skin color as well to have them growing out of they don't just want to be sticking on the horns sticking on the horns, sticking on the head and um, make sure they're nice and firmly felted in because this could be a kind of weak point so I'm going to go over this a few times again anyway. For the eyes we're using the glass eyes I think this was a four or five millimeter when you're going to put eyelids on you want the eyes bigger than you think you're going to need them so I pop the eyes in they're at the side of the head um, these are kind of herbivore type animals so their eyes are more round at the side of their head rather than looking straight ahead like ours would be. So pop the eyes in, angling them inside rather than back like I would a predator's eyes. And then the secret sauce is making eyelids for these guys. And this is just literally folding small pinches of the colour I wanted, in this case white to give a bit of shading around his eyes, and felt a smooth line backwards and forwards between my finger, mainly just concentrating on this edge that's going to be his eyelid. As the needle goes in it will felt some of the fibres behind your finger as you go along, but you don't want to spend too much time I'm concentrating, you're thinking about felting the rest of it, that'll happen anyway, but felt a nice blunt thick line for his eyelids, for the, the edge of his eyelid. You're going to want a slightly larger piece for the top of the eyelid and a smaller piece for the bottle, bottom. And then I want to line these in black, so I just added a thin roll of black. Really careful when you're felting this because obviously where the needle's going it's taking a small amount of black into the white and if you felt out too much you're going to take little pieces, little streaks of black. It's going to happen but if you're careful and felt right into the thickness of the piece or kind of parallel parallel to the surface a little bit more then you're going to have less big streaks of black but you'll get the hang of it as you go along and there's going to be a wee bit and that'll just add to some kind of shading. And then when I attach the eyes I think of putting them on initially in a closed position so it's going to be straight across the eyelid but just thinking of how the eye is shaped so for a human each corner would be about the same height and it would be straight. But for this guy, I wanted a slightly sloping upward angle. So I tacked in lower and then higher at the other end in a straight line like this, doing the bottom eyelids first and then the top eyelids after that's on. 
again doing the top ones and we wanted this to give them a slightly more focused look just drag the line down overlap slightly and bring it down the way down his nose this gives a bit of expression there again felting these closed and then you're going to felt up into the eye I shouldn't really be showing this on my own eyeball that's going to look weird for you guys but you're going to felt up into the eyelid to gently open the eye out and then that's pretty much it for the stage we're at just going over again and again felting squishing him more into the shapes i want and then felting to get more more into that and then i just turned his head down slightly from where it was earlier and that just gives a more focused look than when his chin was was up a bit it just looks better and attaches the head better than sort of having a snake coming off that's again where it's important to add the padding the extra bits at the jaw here as well because you've got every animal's going to have jaw muscles that stick out from the neck a little bit and a jaw so that's it for him this week we're nearly there i was hoping to get him finished today but the spots are going to take a good deal of time but basically we've just got his markings to go on then his manes and you'll see what i mean by manes when i get there and then just firming up a little bit of extra shading using different techniques and then he'll be done so i hope you're enjoying watching me create my giraffe don't forget click on my wee face to subscribe give us a thumbs up check out the rest of the playlist and come back again next Thursday. Thank you so much.